Hey there, and welcome to another episode of the blogcast from SeanVanDyke.com. I'm Sean Van Dyke. I'm a construction industry consultant, business coach, and author of Profit First for Contractors. I help construction business owners streamline their businesses by developing the systems and operations that lead to profitable and sustainable growth. Now, I wouldn't say that I'm your host because this isn't exactly a podcast. There are no guests, no high dollar production, and no agenda. I just want to make it easy for you to get the information that you need to run a better, more profitable construction business. So every time I publish a blog post, I grab my microphone and I record an audio version of the post so that you can listen to the content anytime, anywhere, and use the information to run a better construction business. All right, with that said, let's dig into the blogcast. On today's episode, I'm going to tell you the tale of two students. One student that attends college in order to earn a degree and another student, well, that drops out of college. Now, before you jump to any conclusions about which student lands a better job, listen to this entire episode. You might be surprised where they end up. Okay, let's get started. Most high school students want to pursue an education that leads to a successful career. In order to do that, they need confidence in choosing the right path for their post-secondary education. And that's any education after high school, such as college or a trade school or additional training. The problem is society says that there is only one path to a good job. What do they say? Well, you got to go to college and get a degree in order to get a good job. Society's only one path mantra makes these would-be professionals feel pressure to enroll in any university, to major in anything, to secure a good job and establish financial prosperity. Dr. Kevin Fleming articulates this point in the success in the new economy. And then there's a video in the blog post where I linked that excellent video. You got to go check that out. Most jobs of the future don't require a college degree. Georgetown University produced a study that reports by 2020, 65% of all jobs will require post-secondary education and training. And I linked to it in the blog post there. I show figure four from that study. At first glance, This may seem to support the college for all message that society preaches, but upon closer inspection, the report reveals a different story. 65% of all jobs by 2020 will not require a university degree. Now, many of these jobs will require some post-secondary education, such as an associate's degree or some college courses, but only 35% of all jobs in the future will require a bachelor's degree or higher. So if only 35% of all jobs require a college degree, then why does society say that a college degree is the only path to a good job? Well, one reason is called degree inflation. Degree inflation perpetuates the college for all mantra. Degree inflation is a phenomenon wherein employers demand college degrees for positions that do not require college level skills. And in the blog post, I link to an article at Forbes.com where you can read more about this study. This article details a report by Joseph Fuller and Manjari Raman of Harvard Business School. The report compares the percentage of workers currently working in a particular occupation who have a college degree and the percentage of job postings for that same occupation that stipulate a college degree is required. In other words, just because your barista has a master's degree in fine arts doesn't mean that it takes a master's degree in fine arts to serve coffee. For example, and this is directly from the report, just 16% of supervisors of production workers currently hold a college degree, but 67% of job postings for these positions require bachelor's degrees, creating a degree gap of 51%. Other occupations where degree inflation is particularly Particularly glaring include secretaries, administrative assistants, supervisors of blue-collar workers, and childcare workers. What the report is saying is that 67% of the job postings require bachelor's degrees when only 16% of people holding those jobs actually have those same bachelor degrees. In another example, the report shows supervisors of construction trades and extraction workers are at risk of a 44% degree inflation. Degree inflation widens the skills gap because candidates who meet the technical qualifications don't meet the advertised educational requirements. What happens here is that employers miss out on hiring the best people because the right people never apply. Employers need another path to finding qualified candidates. They need to look 
at college dropouts. College for all, hmm, graduation for some. Many students should drop out of college. Here's why. Okay, pop quiz. How long does it take to earn a four-year degree? Now, I promise this is not a trick question. The answer is on average it takes six years. Most students enrolled in a four-year degree program took six years to obtain their four-year degrees. And this is according to the National Center of Education Statistics. And this is right off their website. The six-year graduation rate for first-time full-time undergraduate students who began seeking a bachelor's degree at a four-year degree-granting institution was 60%. Not only does it take six years on average to complete a four-year degree, but also only 60% of students that enroll in college graduate with a degree. So if only 60% of all students who enroll in college graduate with a degree in six years, then 40% of all students who enroll in college don't graduate. 40% don't graduate even after six years. You see, society is wrong. The college path is not for everyone. According to this statistics, almost half of college-bound students will be looking for another path within six years. When they look for options, I hope they find the trades. The value of education. A Tale of Two Students. Studies by Georgetown University and the Pew Research Center show a gap between lifetime earnings and yearly income between college graduates and high school only graduates. In other words, quote, by choosing not to go to college, you are essentially forfeiting $17,500 per year and $1 million over your lifetime, unquote. That sounds like a lot of money, but let's put it in perspective. These studies compare college graduates to high school graduates. They don't compare college graduates to high school graduates who also have a post-secondary education. When you consider high school graduates with an associate's degree or additional professional training, then the income gap is much smaller. Now, these reports aren't wrong. They're just incomplete. High school-only graduates fare far worse than they did 40 years ago. There's no doubt about that. But high school graduates with post-secondary educations are the focus in this analysis, and they are doing much better. So let's look at a tale of two students. One we'll call the college grad, and the other we'll call the trade school grad. The average cost of a four-year degree in the United States right now, which we know takes six years to earn, is $155,000. The average cost of an associate's degree, assuming a two-year program, is $35,000. The average salary for our college grad is $52,000. And the average salary for our trade school grad is $39,000. That's an average of $13,000 per year more for the college grad. And if you go to the blog post, I show you a, a graphic that lays all of these numbers out. But let's not stop there. Let's look into the future, 25 years after these two students have graduated from high school. Now, if we assume that the college grad graduates high school at age 18 and it takes six years to obtain a degree, then the college grad will have 19 years in the workplace by age 43. So that's 43 years old minus 18 years old at high school graduation minus the six years of college equals 19 years in the workforce. If we assume the trade school graduates high school at age 18 and it takes two years to complete an associate's degree, then the trade school grad will have 23 years in the workplace or in the workforce by age 43. That's 43 years old minus 18 years old at high school graduation minus two years of trade school equals 23 years in the workforce. If the college grad earns $52,000 per year for 19 years, then the college grad's lifetime earnings at age 43 will be $988,000. If the trade school grad earns $39,000 per year for 23 years, then the trade school grad's lifetime earnings at age 43 will be $897,000. That's a difference of $91,000 in lifetime earnings in favor of the college grad 25 years after high school graduation. Okay, Sean, well, what's the point? Looks like the college grad comes out ahead. But wait, that's not the entire picture. We need to consider the risk involved in these two paths. And the risk for many students comes in the form of debt. According to CNNMoney.com, 
students finance about 20% of their post-secondary education costs. So if the college grads finance 20% of the cost of their educations at 4% over 10 years, then the total cost for a college grad is $162,000 for that four-year degree, which we know takes six years. If the trade school grad finances their educations at 20%, then the cost of their educations at 4% over 10 years, then the total cost of the trade school grad is gonna be $37,000. The trade school grad saves an estimated $125,000 compared to the cost of the college grad. When we compare this savings, $125,000 savings in the cost of education versus the $91,000 in lifetime earnings, well, the trade school grad comes ahead, comes out ahead by $34,000. Now, I'm not advocating skipping college. Go to college if that's what you wanna do. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't finance your post-secondary education. That's up to you as well. I'm saying that the message is outdated according to the numbers. There is another path. Earning a college degree is not a waste of time and money for most students but it could be for about 40% of students. Society is wrong. Job security and financial prosperity come through a lifetime of learning and self-improvement. The only path to success no longer meanders through a college campus. Another path exists, and it's being created by people that have skills to build things with their hands. Do you want to improve your confidence as a construction business owner? Do you want to make more money, streamline your construction business, and just get your life back? Well, if the answer to these questions is yes, then sign up for one of my coaching programs. Go to seanvandyke.com slash apply and fill out the application for one of my coaching programs. And my team will follow up with the next steps. Are you struggling to make a profit in your construction business? Is cash flow tight? Are you having trouble paying yourself a regular salary? And do you get confused by the financial reports that your CPA sends you? Do you have any idea how you're gonna pay for your taxes this year? And are you working for the wrong clients that aren't paying you enough to make a profit in the first place? If the answer to these questions is yes, then you need my book, Profit First for Contractors. Transform your construction business from a cash-eating monster to a money-making machine. And it's available right now on Amazon. There's a Kindle version. You can get it, the Audible version. And it's also on iTunes. Or you can go to my website for the book, ProfitFirstContractor.com and right there you can download all the tables and all the figures that are in the book to help you implement Profit First for Contractors and make your construction business permanently profitable today. And while you're on the website, ProfitFirstContractor.com, give me your email address and I'm going to send you some additional training on how to implement Profit First for Contractors in your construction business. So just give me your email address right there in the middle of the page and I'll send you the Profit First for Contractors bonus toolbox and part of that is I'm going to send you a video training series on the four core principles of Profit First for Contractors. So go to ProfitFirstContractor.com and sign up, give me your email address and I'll send you the free video training right now.